You have all the hot Rolexes here. You can't get this either. Anymore. I know. You want to hear a class act? An ex <laughs> bought that for me on his birthday, which was really nice. And then when we broke up, kept asking to buy it back. I, like, what's that? I was. You can't do that. That's taking back a gift. That's no, it's not how trying it works. to buy back That's a gift. Not That's how like it works. even weirder. Welcome, Bethany. Thanks for having us. Well, thank you. Welcome to my home. We're really excited to be here. I'm embarrassed to admit that you are our first female Talking Watches guest. No, so. don't be embarrassed. <laughs> I'm excited. And I'm thrilled too, and I'm a fan of yours and have been kind of watching you for years. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your career? So I'm definitely a businesswoman. I do have several businesses. I do a lot of work in philanthropy and relief efforts. I didn't really ever think of myself as a watch collector until I sort of started hearing about people who collect watches and, and your site sort of showcasing the different stories behind someone's quote unquote collection. I thought, maybe I'm a collector. <laughs> I'm a very detailed person. I obsess over the details. I always say the angel, not the devil, is in the details. You know, whether it's movement or a hand or the dial or just a slight color that no one else would know. I'm the person that likes the things that no one else needs to know. Well, I think that's really applicable to your collection, especially ones like the Rose Gold Daytona here with the ceramic dial, because this is an off-white dial that I don't think I've ever really seen in the wild yet. So why don't you tell us a little bit about this one? So this one, I was in Aspen and I saw a woman who had it on and I took a picture of it and then I hunted it down. So that's how it usually goes. If I'm buying a Patek Philippe, but people say Patek, so I don't know what's yeah, it can right. go either way. But so, <laughs> so this I bought because it has a gray, yeah, it's a gray face. I wouldn't have gotten it if it just was the white face. It's not so large. I mean, this comes up to I think 40. It's feminine, but it's almost a midsize. And even the rose gold Daytona has the diamonds on the dial, which I wouldn't have bought that if it didn't have that one little extra thing. If you're going to like, you know, show off because you're being super glam, this AP rare. This is really gorgeous. It's, this is the most unusual. The way the diamonds are placed, it's like half a mask. I yeah. mean, I've never seen this. Even my friend Pierre, who runs FP Journe, so he's beyond a watch snob. When I was choosing between this and the Paddock newer 24, he said that is not as special as this. The way that the diamonds look like they're dusted on here. I don't proactively go looking until I see something. It's like I'm in the wild. Mm -hmm. I see my prey and I have to figure out how I'm going to get it. So yeah. when I saw this on a woman in Aspen, then that hunt began. My boyfriend's a watch collector, but he's all over the place. So he's always looking at 20 different things and I will have these discussions with him and I'll be like, you are at a buffet in Vegas and you just keep like eating and you're not satisfying <laughs> your appetite because you don't know exactly what you want. So he'll buy and then trade. I'm like, figure out what you really want. It's like a woman. Yeah. Like you wanted me, you found me, you went and did the hunt. That's how it should be for the watch. So I saw this on somebody, I hunted it, I found it, I got a good deal for it. So out of these watches, which one brings you the most joy? My boyfriend Paul for my birthday just bought me this green face Daytona. I just mentioned once that it was just epic and it was before it got really crazy. I like that it has the red tiny details. My boyfriend gave me this on our second date because he was wearing it. And I said, this is amazing. I mean, it's unbelievable. He said, well, why don't you wear it? You know, as if it was like his college sweatshirt. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then he left and I had it on because he went back to Boston and I texted and I said, I still have your watch. I didn't want it to think I'm that girl that's like right, thinking like you're the forgetting, watch. Yeah. I'm forgetting, <laughs> you know, the, the AP major watch. <laughs> and um, he said, no, I think he said, no, I want you to keep it. And the Hulk, the Hulk. <laughs> you have all the hot Rolexes here. You can't get this either. Anymore. I know. You don't want to hear a class act? An ex <laughs> bought that for me on his birthday, which was really nice. And then when we broke up, kept asking to buy it back. I, like, what's I, that? I, I was. You can't do that. That's taking back a gift. That's no, it's not trying how it to works. buy back That's a gift. Not That's not how like it works. even weirder. Yeah. <laughs> he, he regrets it because when he bought it for me, he didn't know it was going to be such a big deal because I just loved it because it had something different. Yeah. The key is if you, if you think you have good taste, buy what really strikes you and what you love. 
Which watch here was your first watch? My first adult watch was the Tank Francaise. It was given to me by a really important relationship, the first real major relationship. I love that he bought me a midsize. There are details in a lot of these that you wouldn't realize. So this is um, an AP Royal Oak from mm -hmm. the 80s. This looks like the dressiest, but you could really wear this with white jeans and a t-shirt. Yeah, no, that, Do you know what I mean? Yes, There's something agreed. about when you've gone so bling that you've gone back <laughs> yeah, to you casual. Circle, yeah. You've made a circle to yeah. casual. Yep. This is a watch that a lot of people do aftermarket. I'm a watch it's snob in that way. Yeah, I think that's a good thing to be no, no, no. snobby I think about. That's a deal breaker because then well, it's no. not real. It's not authentic. Well, no, it's like taking a Mercedes uh, my box sticker and sticking it on the back of a yeah. cheaper car. Yeah. So like, I'll buy my watches used, but I'm not going to front and stunt. Like this is something that you <laughs> see everywhere aftermarket. This is no, it's so true. I'm a I'm an original kind of girl. Do you love wearing your Elegant? Yeah, this is the FP Journe Elegant. It has rubber straps, it's waterproof. It's quartz, which is also controversial. For FP Journe, you know, be having a quartz watch, it's sort of different. It's so beautiful, it's just so absolutely beautiful the way it sits on your wrist. It's not too precious because you can swim in it, but it looks really precious. Yeah. I think it's, it's outrageous. So was there ever a time where you had any watch regrets? So to be honest, I hunted this tour too because it's midsize, which is rarer. It has the diamonds on the bezel. You got to wind it. Yeah. And it's a never ending story. <laughs> most of them I wear just as jewelry anyway, because I mean, you're looking at your foot. When I started collecting watches, you use your watch to actually tell time. <laughs> now you could look at anybody near you. I mean, everyone's got a phone. So yeah. now, it doesn't really matter that you have to wind it, but it annoys me. I have a love-hate relationship with this one. I think you're beautiful. I don't like that you gotta wind you forever. <laughs> and I just don't, I'm glad that I bought you used because you didn't really increase in value over all these years. So if you're buying things in the resale market, mm -hmm. you are taking a chance. I bought a mid-size Cartier Ballon Bleu watch from a reputable dealer. Box, papers, appraisal, the whole thing. I kept my receipt. I always keep it in my safe. When I went back to sell it, I had that receipt, so I went to bring it to my watch guy. He said, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. I've never seen this before. This watch, even Cartier couldn't understand it because it had original parts, hmm. but not that all came from the same watch. So I had a Cartier Ballon Bleu watch, and it was actually white gold. It was actually diamonds but the whole thing was sort of pieced together. Call that a Franken watch. That's so funny because in reality television, they call a Franken bite if they piece together different words into oh. a sentence, which doesn't, <laughs> hasn't really ever happened to me. But so I had a Franken watch, but the dealer who was a reputable dealer gave me back nearly all my money from years before. And that was literally seven years before. That's the sign of a good dealer. That's the sign they... of a good dealer. He got scammed too. He really yeah. didn't know either. Listen, I didn't have an amazing relationship with my father, and I don't have that many things from him. I have some dog tags from the war. But this, this is the most sentimental. The fact that this is my father's and it's sort of like a topical current brand is interesting to me too. My father was a Hall of Fame horse trainer. He would never have bought any of these for himself. This is a Tiffany and it says, Hollywood Park leading trainer. This Tiffany watch, which can you imagine this is a men's watch? As I'm getting older, I feel like they're feeling more sentimental. It's not about having the money to be able to buy a watch. It's about sort of the, the sentiment to a lot of it, which I like, and the story. Yeah. I, I do think. I think that that's what connects people the most, and especially our readers and on this series in particular. People just love hearing the stories and like the personal connection that they have to the watch. So Yeah, it's, it's great. I mean, they're beautiful pieces of art.